ओके गाइस लेट्स टेक अ स्टार्ट वी आर गोइंग टू डू समथिंग चैलेंजिंग दैट इज कॉल्ड आयल्स रीडिंग ठीक है नाउ देर आर टू टू थ्री थिंग्स व्हिच यू नीड टू नोटिस वेरी वेरी केयरफुली द फर्स्ट थिंग इज यू हैव टू बी विद मी इफ आई एम ऑन द फर्स्ट पैराग्राफ ऑफ द पैसेज लाइन नंबर फाइव यू हैव टू बी देयर so wherever i am you have to be there when i read the question you read the question it's not that i read the question and you are reading the passage we don't have any race we are not running any race and we will do ielts reading in a very relaxed easy going mode okay very relaxed the way i am cleaning my glasses okay in a very relaxed way so that you understand each and everything okay so let's take a start whenever you start your reading first of all you are going to read the title of the passage and switch on your imagination why do we need to protect polar bears now polar bear doesn't mean bola khalu bear is bhalu bhalu is rich and polar is barfani rich you know sometimes we have nickname oh agya barfani rich Yes, someone who is fair in complexion, and we are jealous of that person, and we say, "Oh, Agya Barfani, rich." So, why do we need to protect? Means reasons. Why do we have to protect the polar bears? It means polar bear is an endangered species. You know, endangered species, the species that is going to die out. Few are left. They are very close to extinction. right so why do we need to protect now i want you to imagine beautiful snow capped mountains mountains full of snow and then white bear moving on those mountains you will understand things better so in reading because in actual ielts exam there will be pin drop silence so you can easily visualize and your head will be down when you're solving the reading test you can visualize each and everything okay after reading the title and visualizing whatever is in the passage you can go on to questions now listen in ielts reading part 1 uh, in ielts reading throughout ielts reading we have two type of questions i have classified these two type of questions as type a and type b type a questions are those where questions and answers are in order and type b questions are those where questions and answers are not in order and i will tell you which is type a which is type b and you should know as well that this is type a this is type b whenever you start any passage always try to prefer type a questions first and type b questions last type a first type b last last means for example you are doing section 1 in section 1 you have one type b question and two sets of type a questions so first do two sets of type a questions then do type b questions and then move on to the next passage this is how you need to understand that okay another thing those who have weak english that they read english and they don't understand because you know we can read english no problem we can read english but what we read sometimes we don't don't understand after reading a passage we say kenda ki okay because we don't understand so for those i recommend cambridge ielts book number 1 academic reading there will be around six passages you should read and translate them for example once upon a time translate into your native language there was a crow translate into your native language so once you translate book 1 cambridge ielts book 1 along with the mobile you have a mobile difficult word underline the word type the word the meaning okay write the meaning there translate that so through translation although i'm not in favor of translation but unfortunately this is how you guys acquired english language so still your brain understands when you translate a language so try to translate only book 1 that will give you good understanding of language and all that and then start with normal ielts passages and you will understand them okay now we start questions 1 to 7 true false not given true false not given so please you can write it this is type a questions what is type a questions and answers are in order and by the way this is the tip for part 1 for all of you if in part 1 the first question type is type a the answers will be in first or second paragraphs 
clear answers will start coming from first or second paragraphs and all the answers will come together so the first seven questions can be completed easily without any problem okay now let's see what is true false not given they will give you some statements and these statements are questions you have to match these statements with the passage information given in the passage if the statement matches exactly the answer is true if the statement contradicts the passage the answer is false and if they don't give that specific information the answer is not given now important point within the statement you will find a word or a phrase phrase is a group of words within the question you will find a word i will tell you about all these things okay you will find a word or a phrase which is going to decide whether the statement is true false or not given and you have to identify that word or that phrase i'll tell you how to do that okay so once you catch that phrase then you understand if it is this it's true if it is that it's false and if it is neither this nor that then it is not given okay now we read question number 1 polar bears suffer from various health problems due to the build up of fat under their skin now look here you can convert the sentence into three parts if polar bear suffer from different health problems due to build up of fat under their skin answer is true if polar bear have fat on their skin but they do not suffer from problems then the answer is false and if they don't tell us whether polar bears suffer from any health problem because of the fat or not then the answer is not given now one thing another thing all the questions that belong to type 1 type a type a is questions and answers are in order there within the question you have to find a clue word now can you guys see the word fat okay fat is your clue word let's go back and look for the word fat fat or skin skin is another clue word look for the word fat or skin okay now please listen this looking for a certain word in the paragraph is called scanning what do we call it scanning when you scan you don't read you only search for example you are looking for the word fat skin fat skin fat skin so your eyes don't read you don't read when you scan you only search where is the word fat where is the word skin and you found the word on the other hand the second important reading skill is called skimming we need skimming for list of headings there are certain type of questions where you need skimming so for almost for all type of questions you need scanning for some type of questions you need skimming for every question you need careful reading without careful reading you cannot find the answer scanning will take you to the part of the passage where there is the answer and that is your target number 1 target number 1 is i am in the right paragraph right line of the passage which is related to the question now please come back question i repeat polar bears suffer from various health problems due to build up of fat under their skin now third line everyone there one reason for this is that they have up to 11 cm of fat are you with me yes good first paragraph third line from the middle so one reason for this is that they have up to 11 cm of fat underneath their skin humans with comparative levels of uh, adipose tissues would be considered obese and would be likely to suffer from diabetes and heart attack who human it's not about bear now let's read on yet the polar bear experiences no such consequences means polar bear doesn't have any problem with the fat so polar bear suffer from various health problems due to the build up fat under their skin answer is false because human will suffer from problems polar bear does not suffer from any problem that is why answer is false clear okay so if you do it all logically with good understanding step by step 
test after test your reading will improve again i'm telling you reading is complicated no doubt sometimes it becomes overly complicated but if you practice you're gonna be fine uh, in my whole career around uh, five to ten students got nine in reading academic reading just nine to ten uh, like five to ten students okay otherwise seven seven point five is common now let's go on question number two study done by Liu and his colleagues what's the clue word Liu. And, and do one thing. When you read the question, first time, don't read the question carefully. This is for time management. Because in IELTS reading, time management is very serious thing. For time management, first time, skim the question. Skim the question means you need to find clue word. Now, what's the clue word here? Liu. And some clue words are not changed at all. Now, Liu is name, so it will not be changed. Look for the word Liu. Found it? Xi Ping Liu. You know I can speak Chinese. Xi Ping Liu. Chinese. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So anyways, second paragraph. So do this thing. Skim read the question. Find the clue word. Locate the paragraph and line of the passage which is related to that. Now we read the question carefully. Because in academic reading as well as in gender training reading, questions are quite complicated. You read it once, after a few seconds you go back to the passage and the question flies away. Then you go back to the question. So it's a good idea, skim reading, finding the word there in the passage and now we read. The study done by Liu and his colleagues compared Different groups of polar bear. Now look here. Different groups of polar bear. If they compared different groups of polar bear, answer is true. If they compared same groups, not different groups, groups were same, then the answer is false. And if they don't tell us, comparison they tell us, but they don't tell us comparison was among different groups or same groups, then the answer is not given. So this thing, different groups of polar bears will decide the answer as true, false or not given. I'm reading it from there. Our second paragraph after first sentence. They compared, found it? They compared the genetic structure of polar bears with that of their closest relatives from a warmer climate, the brown bears. Okay, brown bears and polar bears Right? So polar bears are the white bears and brown bears are the normal one. Now brown bears are not polar bears. Do you understand? Brown bears are the bears that live in other pieces of land without snow. Polar bears are the one that live in snow. Okay? So warmer climate, the brown bears. Come back. The study done by Liu and his colleagues compared different groups of polar bears. Different groups of polar bears. They were not different groups of polar bear. One group was polar bear, other was brown bear. So the answer is false. false. Try to understand. Different groups of polar bears. For example, uh, let's assume you are polar bears. Just for, for understanding. You are all polar bears, right? Different groups of polar bears means one group, sare chitte. Second group, sare chitte. But he said brown bear. Now, brown bear and polar bear, they are different. Read it again. Different groups of polar bears. No. They were not different groups of polar bear. They were polar bear and brown bears. So the answer is contradictory. In the passage, information is contradictory, yet the answer is false. Okay, don't worry. Try to understand. Why not? See, I mean, in IELTS reading, there is no possibility. It's not like that, okay? Ye bhi keh sakte hai. Why can we say that? When they gave us the comparison, come back, they use the word, they compared. They compared means comparison is given. If comparison is not given, then you can say not given. And one thing more, if you are confused, it's only your fault. IELTS reading is very, very clear. Questions, passage, answers, everything is crystal clear for the readers, right? So if you think, why not not given? I think they did not say that it's because of your own understanding, right? So the correct answer is false. Now, come back. Question number three, Liu and colleagues were the first researchers, underline the word first researchers, 
Now this word first researchers in true false not given whenever they use the word first. If these researchers were first answer is true. If these researchers were second, third, fourth, fifth answer is false. And if they don't tell us whether they were the first one, second, third, fourth, then the answer is not given. And again, I'm telling you, whenever you read the question, you should know this. If it is this, it's true. If it is that, it is false. If neither this nor that, then it is going to be not given. Okay. Now we go back. First researchers. Same paragraph. I'm reading it from fourth line after full stop. Found it. Liu and his colleagues found the polar bears had a gene known as APOB, which reduces level of low density uh, pro lipo, uh, proteins, a form of bad cholesterol. Right? Did they mention anything that they were first researchers or second researchers? In the beginning also they said they did the research, they compared. Now the word first, second, third, last, is it mentioned? Nowhere. So the answer is not given. Because first, second, third is not given. For example, if they mention anywhere, like they were the first ones, or for first one they use the word pioneers. Right? Yeah. Okay, now let's go on. Question number four. Polar bears are able to control their level of bad cholesterol by genetic means. Look here. Look here. Look here. Polar bears are able to control. If they are able to control their bad cholesterol themselves, then the answer is true. If they cannot control the bad cholesterol, answer is false. And if they don't tell us whether polar bears can control they are bad cholesterol or not, then the answer is not given. Now let's go back. I'm reading this uh, third last line. APOB, they said, Liu and his colleagues found the polar bears had a gene known as APOB. Everyone there? Yes, Which reduces level of low density lipoproteins, a form of bad cholesterol. What does that mean? They have a gene which controls the bad cholesterol. What does it mean? It means polar bears can control their bad cholesterol. What is the sentence? Question number four. Polar bears are able to control. How do they control? They have a gene. With the help of that gene, they control the level of bad cholesterol. So the answer is true. Okay. Question number five. Female polar bears are able to survive for about six months without food. Very simple. Look here. If female polar bear is able to survive without food for six months, answer is true. If it is less than six months or more than six months, it is false. And if they don't tell us about female polar bear and survival without food, then the answer is not given. So let's go back. Female polar bear. Find it. Female bears. See that? Third paragraph and in the middle, female polar bears. Found it? Now listen, this is what we call scanning. If you guys are good at scanning, you will be good at time management also. And if you waste a lot of time here and there looking for, because you know, questions and answers are going in sequence. We started from first paragraph, then second paragraph. Now with some space, we've come to third paragraph. Now let's see. Let's look for that. Uh, I'm reading it from here. Female polar bear, however, undergoes extreme conditions. I leave this line, come to next line. Now I'm skim reading. Once autumn comes around, these females will dig. Okay, I go on. Next line. This process results in. Now please read carefully. This process. Okay, I'm reading it from the previous line. Once autumn comes around, found it? Once autumn comes around, these females will dig maternity dens in the snow and will remain there throughout the winter, both before and after the birth of their cubs. This process results in about six months of fasting, where the female bears have to keep themselves and their cubs alive. Six months of fasting. Come back. Female polar bears are able to survive for about six months without food. Without food means fasting, right? And for about six months. Now, for about six months, they use the word about six months. So the answer is true. Got it? 
every time you understand logically why true why false why not given you are learning right when you are very clear about it okay let's go on question number 7 6 it was found that the bones of female polar bears were very weak when they came out of their dens in spring look here when they came out of their dens in spring if their bones were weak answer is true if their bones were still strong answer is false and if they don't tell us whether the bones are weak or strong then not given so let's go back and we see when they come out of their dens same paragraph six months of fasting last line despite this their bones remain strong and dense see that despite this their bones remain strong and dense means false they say they were very weak so opposite of very weak is remain strong and dense okay good answer will be false last question seven the polar bear's mechanism for increasing bone density could also be used by people one day. Future, right? This type of thing can be used by people one day. The polar bear's mechanism for increasing bone density could also be used by people one day. Last paragraph of the same thing. Mechanism. The word mechanism is your clue word. Found it? Okay, so please follow me. I'm going to read it from third last line, last two words. If the mechanism, everyone there? Okay, now please follow me. If the mechanism of bone remodeling in polar bears can be understood, many bedridden humans and even astronauts could potentially benefit. Could potentially benefit. Potentially benefit means they may benefit in the time to come in the future so what's the question the polar bear mechanism for increasing bones density could also be used by people one day now what is the language for by people one day potentially benefit what is the answer true absolutely well now we go on complete the table below remember every type of completion question table completion sentence completion flow chart completion uh, diagram completion any completion type of question is type a questions and answers are in order so we've got uh, 8 to 13 and questions and answers are going to be in order complete the table below choose one word only from the passage for each answer how many words one word and one word from where from the passage there must not be any spelling mistake in IELTS reading if you do that that will be your own careless mistake okay because you have to see the word there and write it down okay write your answer in the boxes 8 to 13 on your answer sheet reasons why polar bears should be protected reasons why polar bears should be protected so we need to find a paragraph please come to fourth last paragraph of the passage the medical benefits of the polar bear for humanity certainly have their importance. What does that mean? It means the reasons why polar bears should be protected. Second page of your uh, passage, the medical benefits of the polar bear for humanity certainly have their importance in our conservation efforts. Conservation means, conservation means polar bears should be protected. And reasons means benefits. So it means we will find the answers in this paragraph. Again, I'm telling you, your target number one should be to locate the part of the passage where there is the answer. And if it is type A questions, then you find one answer. Rest you will find after that, after that, after that, after that. Right? Now we read the question. People think bears as unintelligent now look here give me a word for unintelligent give me a word for unintelligent stupid silly idiot gada whatever you want to say dumb and all that so we look for the word unintelligent please go on unintelligent unintelligent all right the word is 
Unintelligent is not violent. Come on, for God's sake. Unintelligent is? Come on, stupid. Yes, stupid is the word. Okay? All right, stupid. So, now, let's see. Come back to the question. Come back to the question. Question number eight. Unintelligent and dash. Now, listen. Very, very simple. The word and is important. Whatever the word for unintelligent is, after and, whatever the next or previous word is, that will be your answer. So please come to this paragraph. I'm reading it for you from fourth line. Bears, on the other hand, found it? Yes. Bears, on the other hand, seem to be perceived as stupid. Stupid is unintelligent. And in many cases, violent. So they are unintelligent and violent. violent absolutely. With the correct spelling, okay? Violent. All good? Yeah? Okay, let's go on. Question number nine. In Tenoji Zoo, what's the clue word? Tenoji Zoo. Look for Tenoji Zoo. Underline that. A male bear called Gogo in Tenoji Zoo. Got it? Now you have the location and now you read the question. So first reading is skim reading, okay? So let's see. In Tenoji Zoo, a bear has been seen using a branch as a, right? Let's go back and we read it, using a branch as a. Tenoji Zoo, please fo uh, follow me. A male bear called Gogo in Tenoji Zoo, Osaka, has even been observed making use of a tool to manipulate his environment. Making use of a tool to manipulate his environment. Let's go on. The bear used a tree branch. So he used tree branch as a tool. You know, sometimes you use a piece of stick as a tool. Right? Piece of stick as a tool. So he used a tree branch as a tool. So the answer is tool. T-double-O-L. All right, let's go on. This allowed him. This means the use of tool. This means use of tool. And what, what did he use as a tool? A tree branch. This allowed him to knock down something. Go back. Same line, same paragraph. Knock down. For that, they use the word dislodge. Yes. The bear used a tree branch on multiple occasions to dislodge a piece of... Meat. So what will be the answer? Meat or piece of meat? Why meat? Yes, that's right. So if you write piece of meat, your answer is absolutely wrong. Got it? Meat is the right answer. In the same way, like, you know, the story of thirsty crow. So the crow used stone as a tool to raise the surface of water. Right? All right, let's go on. Question number 11. A wild polar bear worked out a method of reaching a platform. Now look here. The word platform is important. Platform where a dash was located. Platform where a dash means something or someone was located. A platform where dash was located. So let's go back. Same paragraph. Last line, you find the word platform. So I'm reading it. Okay, whenever you find the clue word, look here, important point. Whenever you find the clue word, read that line from the last full stop. Okay, so where is the last full stop? A calculated, I'm reading it from there. Same paragraph, third last line. A calculated move by a male bear involved running and jumping onto barrels in an attempt to get to a photographer standing on a platform. So that platform was for photographer. So what will be the answer? Photographer platform. Where a photographer was located. Reaching a platform where a photographer was located means photographer standing. For standing, they use the word located. So the answer is photographer. And I advise you all write down the question number where I locate the answer. When you go back home, practice. Just go back, okay, this is the question, this is the answer. This is the question, this is the answer. This will help you a lot. 
Question number 12. Polar bears have displayed behavior such as conscious manipulation of objects and activity similar to, now look here, what can be another word for similar to? For similar to resembles or they use the word like, look like, okay, let's go back and we see polar bears have displayed behavior such as conscious manipulation of objects and activity similar to. So, let's come to third last paragraph. In other studies, such as one by Allison Ames in 2008, polar bears show deliberate and focused manipulation. The clue word has come. Now let's read carefully. For example, Ames observed bears putting objects in piles and then knocking them over in what appeared to be a game, appeared to be. Now what does it mean, appeared to be? Appeared to be means similar to, absolutely. So appear to be a game similar to a game. And by the way, article will help you as well. Ah, appear to be a game similar to a game. Now appear to be and similar to, these are synonyms. Same like IELTS listening, synonyms are everywhere. And the answer is game. Question number 13, bears may also display emotions. For example, question number 13, they may, what do they mean by they? Bears, and you should know that, okay? Bears may make movements suggesting, now look here, bears are having some movements, these movements suggest something. For example, when the dog is wagging its tail, it means the dog is happy, right? So the movements suggest dash if disappointed when hunting. So when they are disappointed, what does it suggest? Let's go back. Second last paragraph. Can you see the word emotions and all that? Movements. As for emotions, please follow me. Second last paragraph. As for emotions, while the evidence is once again anecdotal, many bears have been seen to hit out at ice and snow, seemingly out of frustration when they have just missed out on a kill. Find the answer. Answer is yes. Seemingly out of frustration when they have just missed out on a kill. Missed out on a kill means disappointed when hunting. So what will be the answer? Frustration. Seemingly out of frustration means they may make movements. And what is the movement? What is the movement? Hit out at ice and snow. Like you know when human people do, oh God, oh no. Like that. So hit out on ice and snow, that is the movement. And out of frustration, so movement suggesting. Suggesting, answer is frustration. Now you should find all these things. Ki answer kyun hai? Pata to chal gaya, answer is this. Now why? All right, there they use this word, that word. This word has this meaning. This word has this meaning. This is how you will learn. Now for example, if you only look at question number 13, you learn so many words. For example, Movements suggesting. And what is the word for movements? Hit snow. Hit out snow. Then disappointed when hunting. What is the word for hunting? Kill. kill. And what is the word for disappointed? When they have just missed out on a kill. So this is the language you need to master. Language of questions, language of passage. And this is only done through practice. If I give you a list of words that you learn these words, they will never help you. Because you never know. This is called paraphrasing. This is called re rewording. So for movements, they talk about walk, running. Running is movement. Walk is movement. Okay? So it's just like that. Thank you. Chalne ji. Now we have reading passage 2, list of headings. So let's see how to crack list of headings. Okay. The first thing is list of headings. Uh, for this, you need skim reading. Skim reading plus careful reading. Listen, they give you a list of headings. There are around seven, eight, nine headings, five, six, seven questions. And you have to give an appropriate heading to a paragraph. For this, it is important for you guys to understand what does a paragraph contain. In IELTS reading passages, 
paragraphs contain certain specific ideas and these list of headings cover those certain and specific ideas. Now, in order to do list of headings, you should be able to skim read the paragraph and find what is the main idea or what is the specific idea which is being discussed in this very paragraph. Sometimes that main idea is in the first line. Very, very simple. You read the first line, you find the answer and you, 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 you are happy and you have a belief that I read first line, I find the answer. Not always. Sometimes you need to reach the middle line to find the answer. And sometimes they describe, describe, describe. At the end, they come to the main idea. So then the main idea is in the last line. Okay? So you need to see what is the main idea. One thing. Second, for list of headings, it's a very good idea to skim read all the headings. When you skim read all the headings, at least you have ideas in mind. Because headings are made uh, on a certain pattern. Once you solve 8 to 10 list of headings questions, you will understand they have a pattern and they make headings on that. For example, one pattern is past and present of something. Now you will find a paragraph where they will say this thing started in 1925 like this and today it is like this. So past and present. This is how they make headings. I'll just give you one small example. You need practice to reach there. Now please see. Before you read list of headings, and list of headings is the first question, and this is type B. Questions and answers are not in order. So first of all, you are going to read the title of the passage. What is the title? Step Pyramid of Dijoser. You know pyramid? Which country? Egypt. Egypt. Pyramids are linked with Egypt. So Step Pyramid of Dijoser. Now we understand the whole passage is about Pyramid. Now, if someone doesn't know what is pyramid, you will be in trouble. You don't understand. Pyramid. Pata nahi kaun sa janwar hai. Ye billi jaisa janwar. Something like that. Okay. After this, now we come to headings. I'm going to tell you how to read and interpret headings. Heading number one, everyone. Areas and artifacts. Look. Areas means the areas and artifact means the things which are found. Areas mean location. And artifact means the things which are found within the pyramid. Very simple. Inside the pyramid, they will say we found inside. For example, inside the pyramid, we found kitchen, bathroom, this, that. And we also found some things. So that is area and artifact. Artifacts are like old things. For example, you go to the zoo, uh, museum. In the museum, you see artifacts. Understand? Purani cheese. So areas and artifacts. In the pyramid, in a paragraph, they will talk about inside the pyramid. You can find this, 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 and this. This heading will go there. Clear? And I want you to imagine. Imagine pyramid. Dekhi kisi ne documentary pyramids ki? Yeah, you can just do that. Heading number two. Difficult task for those involved. Look here. Difficult task. They will not use the word task. They will describe something. For example... Uh, carrying the big stones on shoulder. What is that? Difficult task. And those involved, for those involved, they can use the word laborers, laborers, masons, slaves, for example. Right? So difficult task, carrying that thing. And people involved, for people, they can use the word masons, laborers, and all that. Heading number three. A king who saved his people. In a paragraph for king, they will use the name of the king. Saved his people, they will tell us how he saved his people. There was a war that he protected his people from, or there was a flood or earthquake, so whatever, right? Next, a single certainty. Now, this is very important. You might come across this type of heading anywhere. A single certainty among other less defined facts. Look here. They will just define some people believe this, some people believe that, but this thing is sure. Or there is no doubt about it. They use the word, this thing is sure. Although some people believe this happened like that. Some people say this earth was created in the form of an accident. But there is no doubt about the fact that this earth was made by God Almighty. Like that. So when they say single certainty. Single certainty means ye baat to pakki hai. Baki sab idar udar ki theories hai. But this is the sure thing. 
Heading number five, overview of the external buildings and areas. Very simple, outside the pyramid. They will say outside the pyramid, there is a beautiful lawn, there is a beautiful garden, there are some quarters, there are some houses, by Bakriya Bandi, whatever they say, that is going to be this heading. Clear? I mean, you just imagine outside and all that. Heading number six, pyramid design that others copied. Now, a design which was copied by other. For example, they say Egyptian pyramid design was copied by Greek people or people in China, they copied the design and all that, okay? Heading number seven, idea for changing the design of burial structure. What is burial structure? Grave, tomb, just go up tomb, grave, tomb, right? And we use another word, mausoleum. Kaidi Azam's mausoleum in Karachi. A big building, where there is the grave of a famous person is called mausoleum. So it can be mausoleum. So burial structure, wherever they say, pehle logon ko litake dafnate te, inhone khada karke dafnana shiru ka. Something like that. Something related to bury, uh, burying the people, right? So this is simple. Heading number eight. Incredible experience despite the few remains. Now, for example, you're digging gold. You're digging gold. You only found thoda sa sona. But experience was amazing. So what is that? Incredible experience despite few remains. They say they, their experience was incredible, although many of the things had been stolen and they found only a couple of things there, but still the experience was good. Heading number nine, answers to some unexpected questions. So they will give answers, replies to some unexpected questions. Now after reading all this, we come back to paragraph A. Now, over here, you will switch from careful reading to skim reading. Careful reading to skim reading. Sometimes careful reading, then skim. Then careful, then skim. Skim, skim, careful, careful, like that, okay? Let's see how to do it. The pyramids are the most famous monument on ancient Egypt, blah, blah, blah. Let's come to second line. These grand impressive tributes to the memory of the Egyptian king have become linked to the country even though other, uh, other cultures such as Chinese and Mayan also built pyramids, okay? Now, they didn't mention copy. They didn't mention. They said they also built. Okay, let's go on. The evolution of the pyramid form has been written and argued about for centuries. Evolution of pyramid form. Please focus. The evolution of the pyramid form has been written and argued about for centuries. However, there is no question that as far as Egypt is concerned, it began with one monument to one king designed for one brilliant architect, designed by one brilliant architecture. Now, answer is with this. However, there is no question that. Before that, they said, the evolution of the pyramid form has been written and argued. Means there are many theories about it. Then they say, however, there is no question that as far as Egypt is concerned, it began with one monument to one king designed by one brilliant architect. Now tell me which heading is appropriate for that. Heading number four. Why four? A single certainty. And what is that single certainty? They said, however, there is no question that. When you say there is no question that, it means it's a sure thing. There is no question that, and what is that certainty? As far as Egypt is concerned, it began. Means uh, these uh, uh, pyramids, they started from Egypt, and there is no question about that. There are questions about shapes and sizes and this and that. So for paragraph A, correct answer is heading number four. And how will you do it? For list of headings, be careful. You have to use Roman numbers. Roman number. How do you write Roman four? I... V, that is Roman 4. So on your answer sheet for number 14, you will write IV. Let's go on. Heading B. Okay. Dijoser was the first king of the third dynasty of Egypt and the first to build in stone. Prior to Dijoser's reign, tombs were rectangular. What is tomb? Burial structure, yes. Tombs were rectangular monuments made of dried clay brick which covered underground passage where the deceased person was buried. Right? We are, we are clear. For reasons which remain unclear, Dijoser, main official whose name was Im, uh, Imhotep, conceived the building a taller, more impressive tomb. 
So they were perpendicular, rectangular, and he conceived the taller building for that. What is that? Heading number? An idea for changing the design of burial structure. They were perpendicular, and he made them taller. So idea for changing the design of burial structure. And one more thing, when you are done with the heading, you have to cross it as well so that you don't read it again. One heading will be used with one paragraph only. So we have used heading number four and heading number seven. So we will not use them again. Four and seven, they've been used already. Let's go on. Paragraph C. The step pyramid has been thoroughly examined and investigated over the last century. And it is now known that the building process went through many different stages, OK? Historian Mark Van, uh, uh, this name, comments on this, writing, much experimentation was involved, which is especially clear in the construction of the pyramid in the center of the complex. Let's go on. It has several plans before it became the first step pyramid in history piling six levels on top of one another. The weight, uh, now this line is important because before that they just had general thing. The weight of the enormous mass was a challenge for the builders. See that? Weight of the enormous mass was a challenge for the builders who placed the stones at an inward incline in order to prevent the monument breaking up. Which heading? Two. Two. What is that? Difficult task for those involved. Now, what is difficult task? The weight of the enormous mass was a challenge. And what is the word for those who involved? Builders. Builders. Absolutely. That's right. So, for paragraph C, question number 16, answer is heading number 2. Cross 2 as well. Good time management. Otherwise, you will read a heading, put it somewhere, then you will know that it will be put it somewhere. You will know that it will be put it somewhere. <laughs> okay, all right, let's go on. Paragraph D. When finally completed, the step pyramid rose 62 meters high and was the tallest structure of its time. The complex in which it was built was the size of a city in ancient Egypt and included a temple. Complex included a temple shrines, courtyard, living quarters for the priests. Complex include. So, go back, see, complex include shrines, courtyard, temple, huh? Heading number five, and uh, heading number five, an overview of the external building. Now, why external? Whenever they use the word complex, complex means the complete thing. Pyramid was one part of the complex. So complex means pyramid and the surrounding areas. And what was there in surrounding areas? They had quarters. They had, uh, what else? Shrines, courtyard, temple, quarters. Absolutely. So heading number five, overview of the external buildings and areas. Clear? Cross heading number five as well. Okay. Had, uh, now we go on. Uh, paragraph. E, the burial chamber of the tomb where the king's body was laid to rest was dug beneath the base of pyramid. Now, what did they do? They dug it. Khodna, khodai karna. Okay? They say the burial chamber of the tomb where the king's body. Now, this is not related to the burial structure. They are not saying perpendicular and all that. Okay? They say a burial chamber of the tomb where the king's body was laid to rest was dug beneath the base of the pyramid, surrounded by a vast maze of long tunnels that had room of them. Now, just focus. A vast maze of long tunnels. There were so many tunnels there. You know tunnel? Surung. That had rooms of them to discourage robbers. One of the most mysterious discoveries found inside the pyramid was a large number of stone vessels. Vessel means burthen, container. Over 40,000 of these vessels of various forms and shapes were discovered in the storerooms of the pyramid. Now let's go back. See which heading? First. What is that? Areas and artifacts. For areas, they use the word tunnels. 
and for artifacts they use the word vessels stone vessels okay heading number 1 will go here now see sometimes you find the clue in the beginning sometimes middle sometimes end so you got to skim read paragraph f unfortunately all of the precautions and intricate design of the underground network did not prevent ancient robbers from finding a way in means chor chori karke le gaye right the joseph's grave goods and even his body were stolen at some point in the past and all archaeologists found were a small number of his valuable overlooked so they did not find anything i mean these things were stolen heading number 8 an incredible experience what was that they went up there despite the few remains and what were few remains few remains small number of valuable overlooked right by the thieves overlooked means choron ne chhod diya it's that paragraph g egyptologist uh, myroslav uh, werner writes few monuments hold a place in human history as significant as that of step pyramid in sakkara it can be said without exaggeration that this pyramid complex constitute a milestone in the evolution of uh, monumental stone architecture in uh, architecture in egypt and in the world as a whole the step pyramid was revolutionary advanced in architecture and became the archetype which all the other great pyramid builders of egypt would follow others would follow it became an archetype others would follow heading number 6 a pyramid design that others copied for others copied others would follow right if someone follows your fashion your dressing that means the person is copying you okay now heading number 6 will go here which headings we did not use heading number 3 and heading number 9 now heading number 3 is a king who saved his people no mention and heading number 9 the answer to some unexpected questions they didn't mention that okay okay guys now we have questions 21 to 24 questions 21 to 24 complete the notes below choose one word only i told you notes completion questions and answers are in order they are in order so step pyramid of djoser the complex that includes now please go back and tell me where do they talk about complex paragraph c paragraph d second line found it now it means answers will start coming from here again i tell you first target should be to locate the part of the passage that contains the answers so paragraph d second line the complex found it yahan pe nishani laga le now we go back the complex that includes the step pyramid and its surroundings is considered to be as big now look here whenever they use the word as big as small for this they will use the word size for example as big as an egyptian dash so they can say big country small country but they use the word big so please go back and look for the word size let's read it paragraph d second line the complex in which it was built was the size of a city as big as a city means size of a city size of a city means as big as a city egyptian city and they've mentioned as big uh, it was the size of a city in ancient egypt so what does that mean as big as a city in egypt so what is the answer city exactly question number 22 and by the way when you do one sentence question type when you do the second one you are quite familiar and especially with list of headings you will be very very familiar and by the way let me tell you you should do list of headings at the end at the end means first you solve this sentence completion and then you do list of headings anyways question number 22 the area outside the pyramid included accommodation that was occupied by for accommodation they use the word quarters occupied by for for example quarters for soldiers accommodation occupied by soldiers go back and find it 
can you see uh, living quarters? What is living quarters? Accommodation. Living quarters for the priests, for the means occupied by, what will be the answer? Priests. Okay? Living quarters, uske liye word aage hai, accommodation. Occupied by, for the, and priests, plural will be the right answer. And by the way, when you do IELTS reading, if the word is plural, write it plural. If it is singular, write it singular. Unless it breaks any grammar rule. Priests will be the right answer. Okay, now you guys can see there is a separate summary now. It means the location is going to be different. A wall ran around the outside of the complex. Now let's, let's look for that. Wall ran around the outside of the complex. Please try to find it. Wall. Paragraph D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th line. The wall had 13 false doors. Got it? So it means answers are going to be here. Now we read the question. The wall ran around the outside of the complex and a number of false entrances, false, entr false entrance means false doors, were built into this. In addition, a long dash. For long, they can use the word 20 kilometer long. Go back and see what is long. A long. For long, they use the word 750 meters. Huh? Trench. Now understand, for long, they use the word 750 meter. Like we were doing IELTS listening yesterday, tallest. For that, they use the word highest. So over here, for long, they use the word 750 meters, and the answer is trench. You know trench? Soldiers dig a trench, khandak. Yeah. Morcha, exactly. More like morcha. Absolutely. Okay, now question number 24. As a result, any visitor who had not been invited were cleverly prevented from entering the pyramid grounds unless they knew. They means the visitors. Unless they knew the dash. So we go back. If someone wished to enter, please follow me. If someone, this is fourth last line of fourth paragraph. If someone wished to enter, he or she would have needed to know in advance how to find the location. So he or she would know in advance. So for that, they use the word unless they knew. Unless they knew the location of the real entrance. So they needed to know in advance the location. And for real entrance, what is the word? What is the word in the passage for real entrance? True opening, absolutely. True opening is for real entrance, right? Okay, that's good. Okay, guys, now we've got uh, multiple choice question. And there are two questions. We call it double multiple choice questions, okay? Why double multiple choice questions? Because there are five options. And out of five options, you have to choose two. If they give you three options, you have to choose one. Sometimes they give you seven options and you have to choose three. This is also possible. Questions 25 to 26. Choose two letters A to E. Write the correct letters in boxes 25 and 26 on your answer sheet. Which two of the following points does the writer make about King Dejoser? Now, the first thing is, throughout the passage, you will underline King Dejoser. Do it, please. King Dijoser, underline. Wherever you find King Dijoser, underline. King Dijoser, King Dijoser, King Dijoser, underline that. You will find it on, in paragraph B also. Right? Then you need to go on. King Dijoser. And then you find it again in paragraph F. Find it? Have you found it? Then Dijoser is in paragraph E also. Right? So two points he makes. So this question is going to be a bit complicated. Wherever De Joseph is mentioned, you got to read that. Let's start from paragraph B. De Joseph was the first king of the third dynasty of Egypt. They talk about him. And then please come to this uh, fourth line. For reasons which remain unclear, De Joseph's main official found it. The Joseph's main official whose name was this, okay, we read about that, that they changed the burial structure. Now, please come to third last line. The Joseph is thought to have reigned for 19 years. 19 years means 
his uh, government continued for 19 years but some historians and scholars attribute a much longer time commonly people believe 19 years but some people think it was much longer than 19 years for his rule owing to the number and size of the monuments he built so they talked about rectangular and all that then they talked about the building taller buildings and then they talked about the reign of the Djoser, 19 years, but some people believe it was much longer. Now come back to options. Initially, option A, initially he had to be persuaded to build in stone rather than clay. Then mention that. Option B, there is disagreement concerning the length of his reign. That's right, 19 years, but some people believe it was much longer than that. So B is the first correct answer. Okay, let's read option C. He failed to appreciate Imhotep's part in the design of step pyramid? No. Until now, we didn't read anything. Option D, a few of his possessions were still in the tomb when archaeologists found it. Yes, we read it already. Where did we read this? Paragraph F. See that? If you read the passage carefully, you can answer the question easily. Paragraph F. Unfortunately, all of the precautions and intricate design of the underground network did not prevent ancient robbers from finding a way. Dijos's grave goods and even his body were stolen at some point in the past and all archaeologists found were a small number of his valuables overlooked by the thieves. So, option D, a few of his possessions were still in the tomb when archaeologists found it. So, the correct answer is B and D, on your answer sheet, 25B, 26D. And even if you change it, no problem. If you write 25D and 26B, that's correct. No issues with that, right? Okay, guys. Now we move on. And this is the last passage. Passage 3, the future of work. In this passage, they're going to tell us about the future of work. Future of work means the jobs people do. What will happen to that in the future? The future of work, that is the title. Now, please come to questions. <clears throat> 27 to 30. What type of question is that? 27 to 30. We call it multiple choice questions. 27 to 30, multiple choice questions. Write the correct letter in boxes. Question number 27. The first paragraph tells us about. Now, listen, for multiple choice questions, you will not read the options first. Deal with them like you deal with a uh, list of headings, right? The first paragraph tells us about. Now, first of all, we will go to first paragraph, skim read first paragraph and find out what is it that the first paragraph tells us about? Then we come back and go through the options and the right option is going to click us. So let's go back. First paragraph. I'm reading it. Please follow me. Future of work. First paragraph. According to a leading business consultancy, 3 to 14% of the global workforce will need to switch to a different occupation within the next 10 to 15 years. What does it tell us about? 11, 3 to 14 percent of the occupations, they have to switch to a new occupation, means their occupations will be finished, right? Three, uh, 10 to 15 years and all workers will need to adapt as their occupations evolve alongside increasingly capable machines. So what are they telling us about? Many people will switch their jobs. For example, if they have accounting software, then there is no job for accountants. Right? So they tell us 3 to 14% of global workforce, they will have to shift or change their occupations within the next 10 to 15 years. Now please come back. Tell me which option matches with that. Option A, kinds of jobs that will be most affected by the growth of artificial intelligence. Yes or no? No. Let's leave op option B. Come to option C. Proportion of the world's labor force who will have jobs in artificial intelligence in the future? No. Option D. Difference between ways that embodied and disembodied artificial intelligence will impact on workers? No, not at all. It's option B. Extent to which artificial intelligence? If you read this paragraph further, 
you will find they are talking about AI, automation or embodied artificial intelligence. So the extent to which AI will alter the nature of the work that people do, right? The extent, what is the word for extent? 3 to 14 percent of global workforce, that is for extent. AI will alter, what is the word for alter? Yeah, switch to a different occupation. They have to switch or change, adapt. The word adapt is for that, okay? So for question number 27, B is the right answer. Okay, you can practice again, go back to paragraph, read the options and all that. Question number 28, according to the second paragraph, now in, uh, in multiple choice, sometimes they tell us about the paragraphs clearly. According to the second paragraph, what is Stella Pekidi's view of the knowledge economy? Now, knowledge economy is in inverted commas. So, knowledge economy is a terminology and you need to look for Stella. And they mention second paragraph. So, let's go back. Can you find second paragraph? And the word knowledge economy? Okay, I'm reading it from the beginning. Dr. Stella from Cambridge Judge Business School believes that some of the most fundamental changes are happening as a result of algorithmication. Algorithmication is again the same thing like uh, artificial intelligence. You know, sometimes on Facebook, on YouTube, you watch one video. They suggest you the same videos. By mistake, you watch one of my videos, they will show you many of the videos, okay? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, this, that is what they call algorithmication of jobs that are dependent on data rather than on production. Focus this thing. I'm reading this line again, believes that some of the most fundamental changes are happening as a result of algorithmication of jobs that are dependent on data rather than on production. The so-called knowledge economy. Now what is so-called knowledge economy? That Fundamental changes are happening as a result of algorithmication of jobs that are dependent on data rather than production. So let's go back. According to second paragraph, what is Stella Pekidi's view of knowledge economy? Let's read the next line also. Uh, algorithms are capable of learning from data to undertake tasks that previously needed human judgment, such as reading legal contracts, analyzing medical scans, and gathering. So they say algorithms are capable of learning from data. Let's see now. Please go through the options. It, it means knowledge economy. Now be clear about it. It means knowledge economy. Knowledge economy means that they are using artificial intelligence to read different things. So, it is having an influence on the number of jobs available. Yes or no? They didn't mention number of jobs available. Uh, by the way, the best way to deal with multiple choice is elimination. Cross the wrong options. Yeah. A cannot be the answer. B. It is changing people's attitude towards their occupation. No. Now we are left with two more. 50-50. C. It is the main reason why the production sector is declining. They, did, they talked about production, but they did not mention declining. Try to understand that. They did not mention declining. Now, if ABC is not the right answer, then the right answer is D. It is a key factor driving current developments in the workplace. Right? Now, let's go back. The so-called knowledge economy. Algorithms are capable of learning from data to undertake tasks that previously needed human judgment. So, algorithms are capable of learning from data. This is what they use as key factor. Let's go on. Question number 29. What did Pekidi observe at the telecommunication company? Now, we look for telecommunication company. What did Pekidi observe at telecommunication company? Where do you find? One, two, three, four, fifth paragraph, and there we have telecommunication company. Can you find telecommunication company in any, any other paragraph also? Just try. No? No, it's only here. Good. 
so the question is what did pekidi observe her observation about telecommunication company let's read it please another issue is the extent i'm reading this fifth paragraph 1 2 3 4 5 another issue is the extent to which the tele uh, technology influences or even controls the workforce for over 2 years pekidi monitored monitored means observed important point a telecommunication company inverted commas the way telecoms sales people work is through personal and frequent contact with clients now this is what she observed that the way telecom people work through personal and frequent contact with their clients using the benefit of experience to assess a situation and reach a decision this is what she observed however the company had started using algorithm that defined when account managers should contact certain customers by which kind of campaigns and what to offer them so she observed that now let's come back what did pekidi observe option a staff disagreeing with the recommendations of ai no cross it b staff feeling resentful resentful means angry staff feeling angry resentful about the intrusion of ai no so a and b they are not at all some options are no some options are not at all c staff making sure that ai produces the results that they want maybe let's read option d staff allowing ai to carry out tasks they ought to do themselves no not at all so the right answer is option c staff making sure that ai produces the results that they want now please come back however the company had started using algorithm that defined when account managers should contact now when account manager should contact certain customers about which kind of campaigns and what to offer them so this is actually staff making sure that ai produces the results that they want all right let's go on question number 30 in his recent published research evan megage find the word evan megage Okay uh we got this word Evan Megage in fourth paragraph 1 2 3 4 yeah we got it here Evan Megage so let's read and by the way can you see the next fifth paragraph his recently published research so that means they talk about him in the next paragraph also right and then the second last paragraph again he adds so how many paragraphs three paragraphs now what's the question in his recently published research now see we are specific uh the clue word is evan megage but we are just going to read about his recently published research which paragraph is that it's third last paragraph clear so you don't need to go anywhere you will just come to this point his recently published research answers the question of whether automation ai and robotics will mean a jobless future by looking at the causes of unemployment history is clear that change can mean uh, can mean redundancies redundancies when people become jobless but social policies can tackle this through retaining and redeployment social policies can like politicians can make some policies to retain the staff and to redeploy like if you are an accountant they have accounting software they will give you another job in the company that's what they are talking about now please come to options option a challenges the idea that redundancy is a negative thing they talked about redundancy but they did not mention it as a negative thing so a is not the answer b shows the profound effect of mass unemployment on society they talked about unemployment but effect on society is not mentioned option c highlights some differences between past and future job losses no they didn't mention past and future job losses option d illustrates how changes in the job market can be successfully 
Handled. Now, what is successfully handled? Exactly. They mentioned it here, but social policies can tackle this. Tackle means successfully handle through retaining and redeployment. For question number 30, D is the right answer. Clear? Okay, guys, may I have your attention, please? Let's do this all together. Algorithmication of jobs. Question number 31. Stella Piketty of Cambridge Judge Business School has been focusing on the algorithmication of jobs which rely not on production but on. Now let's go back. Please come back. It's the second paragraph. So on data third line on data rather than on production rather than means not production but data now you will find a synonym of data huh well done so what will be the answer g if you write g and information your answer will be absolutely wrong the correct answer is only g hanji hanji g g g g yeah okay and now you should cross G from here. Once you find the right answer, you got to cross it there so that you don't use it by mistake. Question number 32, while monitoring a telecommunication company, we know that already. While monitoring a telecommunication company, Pekidi observed a growing dash on the recommendations made by AI. Growing dash on the recommendations made by, come back. Second last paragraph on title page, growing dash. So I'm reading it from, uh, let's read it from second line. In cases like this, found it? In cases like this, Pekidi believes a short-sighted view begins to creep into working practices. Where, whereby workers learn through the algorithm's eyes. So, what does she say? Workers learn through the algorithm eyes and become dependent on its instructions. Instructions of artificial intelligence. Alternative explorations where experimentation and human instinct lead to progress and view ideas are effectively discouraged. So, they depend more on, dependent on its instructions now come back a growing dash growing means they depend more on the instructions for instructions they use the word recommendations so what is the word for depend depend in option e the word is Reliance, become dependent. Become dependent means there is the reliance. Reliance means that you trust or depend on someone. So the correct answer for 32 is E. e. Now cross E as well because you will not use it second time. Question number 33. Meanwhile, staff are deterred from experimenting and using their own dash. Staff are data that you don't have to use your own, just follow artificial intelligence. So what is it that they don't have to use on their own? Okay, they use the word alternative explorations, where experimentation and human instinct lead to progress and new ideas are effectively discouraged. Now look here, what are effectively discouraged? Yes, experimentation, I mean, alternative exploration where experimentation and human instinct. So experimentation and human instinct, they are discouraged. Now let's go back. They said here, uh, experimenting is already mentioned. So the second word is human instinct. Now what is the alternative of human instinct? Intuition. So if you don't know intuition, intuition is your chati his. Right? Sixth sense. So if you don't know intuition, you cannot find this answer. Intuition is option C. So 33 for human instinct, they use the word intuition. Let's go on. Question number 34. To avoid the kind of situations which Pekidi observed, researchers are trying to make 
artificial intelligence decision making process easier to comprehend and to increase users dash with regard to technology users dash decision making and all that first paragraph can you see the word decisions i'm reading page second page of the uh, of the passage first paragraph its scenarios found it okay its scenarios like these that many researchers are working to avoid their objective is to make artificial intelligence technologies more trustworthy and transparent trustworthy and transparent so that organizations and individuals understand how ai decisions are made trustworthy and transparent what is the word when something is trustworthy and transparent to increase users confidence there is no other word to increase users confidence when you trust something that something is transparent you trust that means you have confidence on that right so confidence is option f for question number 34 f will be the right answer karo ladke na aaya karo okay now we've got questions 35 to 40 can you see we've got how many questions six questions 35 to 40 how many questions 35 is inclusive right there are six questions and this question type is very important very common in academic as well as in general training reading part 3 this is advanced level part 3 so in part 3 you often come across matching where you have to match a list of scientists with the statements this is called matching they will give you a list of researchers list of experts list of scientists and you got to match with the statement statements are the questions and the list of scientists these are the options now the bad news is questions and answers are not in order but the good news is list of people and the passage they are in order okay now in the passage you found stella pakidi found it yes, sir. okay now please try to find hamish lo hamish lo hamish lo okay so you find please underline that hamish lo underline that it's a second and third paragraph low believes got it second and third paragraph because we have three names and six options so it means one option will go with two questions as well after that we have even megage where is even megage this is uh, yeah uh, fourth fifth and sixth paragraph got it so you have found the location now listen you just have to match these statements with the names of scientists at the moment we are locating the names option a stella pakidi where is she in which paragraph second paragraph we've got stella pakidi in second paragraph underline that word stella pakidi okay second paragraph you you see the word dr stella pakidi and even in third paragraph says pakidi and in fourth paragraph says pakidi it means these four uh, three paragraphs are about her so wherever you see the word underline the word then we have hamish lo wherever you find hamish lo underline that hamish lo is here hamish lo is there hamish lo is there and all that and finally even megage now we have already read about stella her telecommunication observation and her knowledge economy and all that so let's try without reading about stella please come to question number 35 we read the questions greater levels of automation will not result in lower employment underline greater levels of automation and not result in lower employment means people will still get jobs there will be more jobs there will be new jobs but this doesn't go with stella question number 36 there are several reasons why ai is appealing to businesses yes why please come to third paragraph <clears throat> everybody 
We read about that already. Third paragraph, in many cases, they can outperform humans, says Pekidi. Organizations are attracted to using algorithm. Algorithm is another word for artificial intelligence. Okay, organizations are attracted to using algorithms because they want to make choices. Because means reasons why they want to use. They want to make choices based on what they consider is perfect information as well as reduce cost, enhance productivity. These are three reasons. So who said that? That is said by Stella. For question number 36, there are several reasons why AI is appealing to businesses. The correct answer is A. Clear? Okay. <clears throat> Now let's come back, please. Let's read about Stella once again. What does she say? Will you please come to fourth paragraph? But these enhancements are not without consequences. Consequences means the negative things. Okay, these enhancements are not without consequences, say Pekidi. If routine cognitive tasks are taken by AI, how do professionals develop their future experts? Now match something with that. These enhancements are not without consequences. Consequences are range of problems. Question number 38. It is important that, uh, to be aware of the range of problems artificial intelligence causes. For range of problems, they use the word consequences. Clear? So we have answered 35 and 39. Sorry, 38. Okay, now we go on to Hamish. Let's go on to Hamish. What, what do they say about him? Where is Hamish? Second page. Second paragraph. Okay, let's read this. Economist Professor Hamish Lowe believes that the future of work will involve major transitions across the whole life course of everyone, for everyone. The traditional trajectory, now he says that the future of work will involve major transitions across the whole life course of everyone. The traditional trajectory of full-time education followed by full-time work followed by pension retirement is a thing of the past, right? Says low. instead, he envisages a multi-stage employment life, one where retraining happens across the life course and where multiple jobs and no job happen by choice at different stages. Now match something with that. Question number? 39. People are going to follow less conventional career. Exactly, listen. What is conventional career? Education, job, retirement. Right? So what is less conventional? They will go through one job. Please come back. He said here very clearly, traditional trajectory of full-time education followed by full-time. This is traditional thing. Says low instead. Now instead, this is the new thing. He envisages a multi-stage employment life. One where retiring happens across the, retraining, sorry. Retraining happens across the life course and where multiple jobs and no job happens by choice at different stages. Multiple jobs and no jobs. So that is 39. People are going to follow less conventional career path than in the past. So for 39, correct answer is B. Let's see. Yeah, let's go on. Now we read again about him. Please come to third paragraph. On the subject of job losses, are you there? On the subject of job losses, Lowe believes the predictions are founded on fallacy. A fallacy. It assumes that the number of jobs is fixed. If in 30 years, half of 100 jobs are being carried out by robots, that doesn't mean we are left with just 50 jobs for human. The number of jobs will increase. Which option says that? That is 35. Greater levels of automation will not result in lower unemployment, lower employment. He says the number of jobs will increase. The number of jobs will increase. We would expect there to be 150 jobs. 
So for 35, the correct answer is B. How many questions have we done? We are done with four questions, okay? So now we come to Evan Magage. And by the way, if you are lacking time, baki ke do iske palle dal de. Okay? Very, very simple. 37 and 40. But anyways, let's just go on. Uh, Evan Magage is in fourth last paragraph. Please come to that. Uh, and one more thing. In the, para in the passage, you just have to read the options which are with inverted commas. Right? Because whenever they give you statements to match, only inverted commas. So please come to fourth last paragraph. Uh, do we have any option with inverted commas here? Evan Megage, Cambridge researcher. No, there isn't anything. Please come to third last paragraph. His recently published research answers the question of whether automation, AI, and robotics will, need, will mean a jobless future. By looking at the causes of unemployment, history is clear that change can mean redundancies, but social policies can make can tackle this through retraining and redeployment. Go back, see if you find anything related to that. 40. Authorities, yes, absolutely, that's right. Authorities should take measures to ensure that there will be adequacy, adequately paid work for everyone. So that is what he said, but social policies can tackle. All right, let's see. Please come to next one. He adds, if there is going to be change to jobs as a result of AI and robotics, then I'd like to see governments. This is the option. Government means authority. Government seizing the opportunities to improve policy to enforce good job security. So this is said by Evan Megage. So this is question number 40. Please come to question number 40. Authorities should take measures to ensure that they will be adequately paid work for everyone. And this is in second last paragraph. Second last paragraph. He adds, if there is going to be change to job as a result of AI and robotics, then I'd like to see government. Government means authorities. So question number 40, answer is C. Now what are we left with? Let's read question number 37. AI's potential to transform people's lives has parallels, uh, has, uh, parallels with major cultural shifts which occurred in previous eras. Let's go on. We've got the last paragraph. Exactly. The promises of these new technologies are astounding. They deliver humankind the capacity to live in a way that nobody could have once imagined, he adds. Nobody could have once imagined, he adds. Just as the Industrial Revolution, now that is past. Industrial Revolution brought people past subsistence, agriculture, and the corporate revolution enabled mass production, a third revolution has been pronounced. So 37, AI's potential to transform people's lives has parallels with major cultural shifts which occurred in previous eras. What occurred in previous eras? Industrial revolution. For 37, answer is C.